Yes, sir. You just have your pipes froze up. Yeah, froze up. Roger, would your furnace blow up? <laughs> well, you know, <clears throat> that's life. But the Lord never fails. Amen. You can apply a lot of scientific principles to everything we have today, and it finally busts. But when you apply the word of God, though there's little problems at times, it always works. So we appreciate the Lord's good to us, but the weather isn't, you know. And uh, the weather's not bad. As I told you, I learned a long time ago, don't, don't even worry about the weather. Just have, ask God to take you through it. Because uh, that's what life is all about. Just take me through, take me through. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. That's good. Because he's the shepherd we won't want. He leads us beside still waters. That's good, you know, still waters. And he gives us our daily food. Yeah, that's what the Bible teaches us. Give us this day our daily food. Forgive us our trespasses. For thine is the kingdom. We're looking to the one that has the kingdom. <clears throat> so we just keep struggling along. And one of these days there won't be any more struggle. Build your house won't burn down the next time. Well, the third time. This one can burn. It will burn. It better burn, right? So the one millennium won't. All right, that's good. So the Lord bless you all. I don't have any announcements except that uh, Wednesday night, 7.30, Sunday morning at 10.30. And also, the more the paperwork for the mortgage to the church is completely uh, run through now, and uh, the co-signers will be asked at some time or other, likely this week, to uh, go to the St. Paris Bank and sign. You won't have to all go at one time, but I imagine a matter of your convenience, and Brother White will take care of all that for you. So that's good then, and uh, we'll let turn back to you, Lloyd. I'm not going to say anything further because we've got a lot in this morning's service to take care of. <laughs> Father, again, we want to voice our gratitude and our love to you, Lord, today. We only wish, Lord, we were more grateful and more loving, and more of thee, Lord, and less of ourselves, more of your word, and less of our own ideas and understanding. So, Father, we just pray today you'll be, we'll be the fortunate people to be uh, so anointed in our spirits to get ourselves out of the way, Lord, that you can have the full control, Father. Just. Touch our minds, Lord, and touch our hearts, touch our very beings, Lord, and though we might have already had preconceived ideas, and I might have already had what I consider to be anointing that is for this service, Lord, as the prophet said, the minister gets it ahead, but Lord, we're willing to have that all changed, that you might give us truth, if in any way we are in error, Lord, that it might be 100% correct with the word itself, mechanically, and then dynamically so. So, Father, we want to be fed by you today, the Great Shepherd. We want your help. We admit it, Lord, we are not too obedient, but we want to be obedient, Lord. So, bless us today, Father, to learn to just give way to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Just before I bring this number seven on what we call question and answers, which are really <clears throat> my thoughts on some questions <clears throat> that will come up because Brother Branham made certain statements concerning the pastor and the people. I want to say that, uh, uh, especially for those that get the tapes, that this tape is, is most likely to be the last one for about three consecutive meetings at least. Wednesday night, Sunday night, and the following Wednesday, and Brother Clausen will take care of the services for those times. I, I will be away, I don't know just how long, and although I won't be leaving until Thursday morning, it'll be too difficult to take the Wednesday night service. So, <clears throat> 
that is how that is. Now, uh, continuing then with this subject <coughs> of the um, <coughs> pastor and the people, last night we were mainly examining the disciplines the word laid down to govern our conduct as to our own personal lifestyles and our dealing with others. Now, what I'm looking at there is that <clears throat> we all have our own personal lifestyles by the way we perhaps are born. We have a tendency to be, um, oh, you know, more cheerful perhaps than others are. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, some people love music and laughter and they're very gay. And some people are quite dour. And you know, even parts of the country are different from other parts, although I never found it that way. They say, go to New England, the people are starchy and frozen. I found them great fun up there. I didn't find a, a bit of problem at all. I thought it was great. Then, <clears throat> years ago in Canada, before he ever came down and I as a kid was always told is how marvelous the, the people in the States were. These Yankees were so marvelous. I mean, they just did everything for you and they, <clears throat> you know, they put the oil in the car and they washed the windshield and they, and with, you know, very happy, you know, and they're happy to take your money, sure, but they're very happy people. And I come down and they're pretty sour, you know, to what I had been told. So lifestyle, you know, uh, there are certain disciplines in the Word of God, and uh, they're laid down uh, in order to help us with our lifestyle so that we may improve where we lack. As the Bible says, <coughs> he that would have friends must show himself friendly. And, uh, you know, all it mentions, too, that, the, that uh, you're to help others lest, you know, you find yourself tempted and, and then maybe nobody's going to help you to pick you up and things like that. And then also... It deals with our dealings with other people, <clears throat> which um, means how do we really act with people in order to give them the proper breaks that they should have according to the word and the proper help? How do we conduct ourselves? And we looked at that especially. We were concerned with 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, where the church membership seemingly approved gross immorality, which they did, and they also had a very slack and common acceptance of sin in the church. <clears throat> and you'll take a look and see this. They're the church that Brother Paul said were divided. And they were divided, first of all, by the preachers. Uh, you're going to find that the preachers do more dividing than the people do. And yet, they're both culpable. <clears throat> now, in the fifth chapter, then, Paul says here, First Corinthians is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Now, the report was common. The fornication wasn't common. Everybody wasn't living in this free love type of stuff that some of the Pentecostals got into, and they called a soul meeting. Uh, made the church a house of prostitution, you know, which is quite common. So it's, it's reported and on good authority, and most, most people agree that it's done, there's fornication, and such fornication is not so named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned <clears throat> that he that had done the thing should be taken away from among you. Now, Paul said, uh, uh, you know, you've got to stop that thing, and you've got to stop it by getting rid of the guy that's doing it. See, Brother Brown said, gross immorality is the place where he drew the line on communion and things like that. For I verily is absent in body, but present in spirit, and judged already as though I were present concerning him that had done this deed. Now, I mentioned last night that's white throne judgment, so I hope that helps you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you're gathered together with, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. The physical part could even be carted away and, and put in a casket. <clears throat> he could die or go through suffering that he'd wish he'd never tasted the sins of the flesh like he was doing, but he'd have done it legitimately by getting his own wife married, settling down and working, raising a family. But he would be destroyed. See, <clears throat> not annihilation, but he'd have to pay the price here because the spirit would be saved. Now, this is a process that's handed down. Your glorying is not good. They're puffed up, they're glorying, and they're acting as though this thing is okay and we're not legal, as bless God. We believe in eternal security, so it's okay. Hogwash. You know? Now he said, purge out, therefore, <clears throat> he said, glory is not good. No, you're not a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. In other words, the first thing you know, if you let that go, everything goes. 
and the whole church is gone. Purge up therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore keep the feast not with old leaven, neither leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in the epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then you must needs go out of the world. <clears throat> now, in other words, you're not going to win the world to Christ. So if your neighbor lives like the devil, let him live like the devil. And you might caution him, you might give him a witness, but you can't control him. The church was never meant to control the world. Let them go, let them fry. That's their business. The church is meant to control the church. We keep the business right in the local assembly. Now, this was a pitiful mess. When you consider all assemblies were really local and indigenous at the time of Paul, the Nicolaitan spirit was merely there in a form of a spirit that had not yet really taken captive people. But man alive, it sure spread around the country, that Corinthian church, if you want to live in sex and sin, go on down there, because they don't seem to mind. The girls are loose, evidently the men are loose. Man, that must have been a horrible testimony of a local church. The Ephesian church didn't have that. Now, if you're smart, you're catching something. If you're sitting there kind of dumb, it's over your heads, and I'm sorry for you. You catch what I'm trying to tell you? Church's reputation gets around the country. What the people and the preacher does gets around the country. We do here. It gets plumb around the world. Don't think it doesn't. That's why we're taking this series, what this church stands for, and I don't care two bits that anybody else stands for. It's their business. <clears throat> I preach what I believe to be the truth. Now he said here, he said, you'd have to get out of the world. He said, forget it. See, that's why the church is so confused <clears throat> about communism. Communism doesn't have a thing to do with the church. It's a benefit to the church. It brings about martyrdom. It gets the people whether they really want to believe God or not. It's the church you've got to watch out for. So as Brother Branham said, it is not communism, it's Rome. Church can let Frank Sinatra not because he's got money annul his first marriage, which is 100% legal in the eyes of Almighty God. The church doesn't have any authority except the Word of God. And the church had better keep its nose in the Word of God, and the church had better keep its nose in its church. We don't have a thing to do with the world out there. Let them die. Let them burn. I'm not hard and tough. I'm telling you what God says is going to happen. And he warned us that we had better grow up as calves in the stall when we find ourselves in trouble too. All right. <clears throat> now I've written you. He said, now I'm going to bring it right home to bear. You will not keep company. If any man that calls himself a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, was such a one not to eat. In other words, disassociation and disassociation, there's no fellowship there. Now look at it. He says here, you mustn't keep company with a man that says, I'm a brother, and he's a fornicator. You cut him off, you drop him like a hunk of lead. Or covetous. Now you know the word of God, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's horse and his cows and his farm and his money or his wife. Wife coveting. Oh, Brother Bill, heaven forbid. Ha! Yes, heaven forbid, but human sensuality doesn't forbid. And so if a man's got his eyes on women in the church, the Bible says if I offend you, pluck it out. You better have something done to these eyes. He's an, he's an idolater. <clears throat> well, you're an idolater. Actually, a person that's given to money is an idolater or thinks too much about physical things and the natural, but an idolater also is off the word of Almighty God's spiritual adultery, or a railer. A railer is a person that's abusive. He's always attacking people, especially by speech. He's a low type of person. <clears throat> a drunkard, you know what that is. An extortioner, 
he always threatens the violence, I'm going to poke you in the nose or do something, he's ready to fight. You know something? I can tell you right now, I'm going to preach too hard in this. We got a church here that just simply doesn't shun people like that, just kind of walks away. Leaves them to themselves. <clears throat> you know, it's like the old lady. I told you about it many times. Old Bishop Lai told this joke. It's not a bad joke. It's a cute joke. <clears throat> it's an old lady in the Church of England, back in England. She's a crippled old lady. She had a nice apple tree up front. So when the kids would climb the tree and steal the apple, she could never get there in time to grab them. But it used to infuriate her. And Johnny was the ringleader. We all call him Johnny, naturally. Whether it's George or Bill. So anyway, one day, the old gal goes to church. And she sits right in the front, by the way the little boys' choir comes down. You know the boy sopranos? And Johnny was singing in the choir. As he came down, she grabbed me, she said, Johnny, you looks like an angel, you sings like an angel, but I knows you. <laughs> <clears throat> so does this church. <clears throat> That's nice, isn't it? What have I to do to judge them that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within. Now, the church and the individual must learn to forgive these people who are doing this, but at the same time refuse to tolerate their conduct. I'll let that sink in. <clears throat> the reason is that to hold an unforgiving spirit <clears throat> uh, we usually give way to vindictiveness if we don't forgive. We begin to demand more than the person will produce. So therefore, the only sensible thing is to censure the conduct and, if necessary, to take something which we will not do around here, except under gross, under a person's in gross immoral conduct, to put them out. You would, we wouldn't do that. But the conduct of such people is censured. <clears throat> And it cannot be tolerated, but the person must be forgiven. Now, that sounds strange, but it's the only thing I can look at in this respect. Now, forgiveness can restore the offenders, but only after or only on the grounds that the offender quits offending. Otherwise, forgiveness cannot go on to restoration, but can only develop the right spirit that can eventually restore and keep things right in the church. Now, I hope you got what I said there. <clears throat> the restoration does not come simply because the person is forgiven. In other words, we don't hold things against people. We must not. But we must view things in the light that they are not tolerable. And the people doing them, therefore, are not necessarily shunned or even put out of the church, but they're actually evaded. That sounds strange, doesn't it, to shun us to evade? No, it isn't. Not a principle here that you're going to try to abuse anybody. It's a principle that you just simply don't have fellowship with those people. And, and, and actually, if you're going to do the right thing by them, you've got to bring to their attention that those things are not right, period. And if they keep on doing what are you going to do? You just keep on praying. <clears throat> And I, what Brother Branham did, I think, as a secret, is to turn him over to the Lord, not to the devil. Because Brother Branham told me when I asked him the question, I said, Brother Branham, what happens to those if they're turned over to the devil, even amongst those that are sinners? Well, he said, it's very true that you do that because you don't know who is who in the church. But he said, eventually the devil will get them. That's the extreme case. But Brother Branham just turned them over by prayer. <clears throat> I, I've heard that people try to tell me Brother Branham did this often, but in my books, Brother Branham never did. We never discussed it as though he ever did. He might have done it in one case, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but his attitude was one of prayer. So therefore, you're seeing what I'm saying here. When these things are done in the church, 
Forgiveness is uh, a qualification and also the admonition and the attempting to raise the person is always in order, but there is no such thing as a true restoration of that person <clears throat> until the person be quits those things. Now, I hope you're not too confused here because I don't want to get in too involved in this because if we get too involved then we come right down to the place where then people who are refusing to actually line with the word and with the church order are, are placed outside the church, outside the sanctuary of the church where God can judge them, where Satan can have a way. Now, Brother Branham, although that's in the word, Brother Branham took a course which is also in the word that love can conquer and do all things. But when you're talking of love, conquering and doing all things, you are also required to apply the word. You cannot do it apart from the word of God. You cannot say, hey, fellow, you've got to quit drinking. <clears throat> you've got to give a reason for it. It's got to be by the word. You see, you cannot do this thing over here. The heathen do it. You cannot do it and be a part of our, the church. You cannot be a part of the true body of Jesus Christ. You can admonish that something must always be done. We cannot leave in an abeyance. And I say, if the time ever comes where there's a gross immorality, and I would say even this, if there was a person who began getting drunk, if there was a person we knew began working some plan of extortion in the church, and that was done. This is a strange thing about this Jessica Hahn and the Baker case. It's a known case of extortion. Yet to this point, there hasn't been a grand jury called and there's been nobody rise up in the church to condemn her and the people that worked the extortion. Now, I'm trying to tell you here, you just can't wink your eyes at one thing and, and say it's okay for another, or not okay for another thing. <clears throat> you can't meet the Word of God with a winking eye, with a blinded eye. You've got to hit it wide open. And there comes a time if the people who claim to be Christians are extorting and doing this or that, then there is a church procedure, which we'll not discuss this morning, that has to be taken through. And, and to the point of even putting them out, because you cannot tolerate certain things. But I say in the meantime, and you'll hear me say different things, why this church doesn't do these things at this particular moment, and I don't think ever will have to. <clears throat> now, let us note that as soon as the offender desires restoration and shows a contrite spirit and has abandoned his ways, at least he's trying very hard, then we must e unequivocally restore that person. Now, you can't hold grudges. You've got to forgive, and you've got to go the extra mile, <clears throat> which is one of a restoration, and be very glad to do it. In 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, uh, 6 to 9, sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted to many. Now, he's talking about the man they put out of the church because he was engaged in a nefarious relationship with, I believe, was his stepmother. So that contrarywise, you ought to forgive him and comfort him, lest such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. <clears throat> in other words, when the discipline has taken place and the man says, okay, look, I want to be part of you again. You cannot refuse him. You cannot deny the person repentance. Now, you hear what I'm saying? Because I'm, reason, I'm saying it for a reason. <clears throat> Wherefore, I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. You say you love him, then do something about it. You say you want a clean church, do something about it. You say you love people, do something about it. Everything has actually legs on it, if you want to know. <clears throat> so this then is perfect forgiveness where the man is finally restored. In the meantime, don't keep things in your heart. Get them out. And the Lord's helped me wonderfully. <clears throat> and I know he's helped you. From that time of restoration, the sin can never be taken from under the blood. I've never run across the statement, but I understand Brother Branham did say, if you take any man's sin from under the blood, then you become guilty of it on judgment day. So therefore we are to remember, we do not judge another man's servant. Not his own master stands or fallen, God is able to make him to stand. So therefore we're looking at a church that tries to help people. And if the people refuse help, then they may have to be helped out <clears throat> right out of the church, which is what we do not look for. We believe the word of God in this hour is greater than all of that. Now furthermore, Here's another issue to consider. There are problems that are real and damaging to the church, but they are quite vague. And, but they're usually spirits that create an atmosphere within the church. And they will lead and can lead, not always, but can lead to division <clears throat> or some type of chaos or some type of puzzlement which divides the church and causes the church problems. Now, 
<clears throat> since the first requirement of an elder is in 1 Timothy uh, 3 and 2, that same requirement <clears throat> is required of the pastor to forestall what lies in a spirit that could come into the church. Now watch, 3 and 2. A bishop, an elder, must be blameless, the husband of one wife. The word blameless is not what you think it means. The word blameless <clears throat> is a boxer who knows how to parry a blow. <clears throat> he knows what's coming. He sees what's there. He knows the effect. And so therefore this pastor or the elders, whoever is in charge, must be in this category that they no, he can read what is lying dormant and yet not so dormant. It's kind of like a sleeping situation. You see? It's like an infection in your bloodstream or something in your body. We're all full of everything. Cancer, tuberculosis, everything is there. We are a walking graveyard. But the door's got to be open for the cancer to take over. The door's got to be open for TB to take, to take over. And the door that opens to cancer won't bring about TB, vice versa, and so on. <clears throat> so, now, the good, the good ministers are holistic in their approach. They want to see that the church is, is healthy inside and outside. So, as good uh, diagnosticians, and this can be hard, of course, to diagnose, they should be able to know if they're in touch with the Lord, the Word, and the people, <clears throat> if there's a spirit that's coming up within the church. So we take an example. It might be a man or woman who makes it a career in the church to take people aside and fellowship them and start inquiring into their lives and counseling them in the Word. That's not right, but this church doesn't have any problems because we have an open session on Friday nights or whatever nights you can get together and you talk the Word. And anybody that comes to church here is invited to those meetings, not to somebody's home private. If they're going to be invited to any home to talk, it'll be my home because the pastor has that right. According to Brother Branham, it is his right, and not only his right, but it must be done that way. <clears throat> so if a first person goes in where the group is talking, as, as Lloyd said, and I, I say it's so true, you can snow anybody except those that really understand this message in the presence. So anybody sitting in our group of men talking will know positively, without a doubt, who it is that really understands the word. So I'm not worried about that. But there is always that possibility because innate within us, there is a desire for leadership. And brother, sister, if you're not, especially brethren, women are not peers, you're out of the picture entirely. <clears throat> but brethren, you could take an office and so on. If you ever get miscued by the devil on this, you are in serious, serious trouble. And you notice that is why the pastor has every right to pick the slate <clears throat> that the people can vote on. Now, the people, first of all, will pick the slate, and the pastor will say, all right, from what I gather, these men are good men. We'll leave it in your hands then <clears throat> to go ahead and vote because he's satisfied that there will not be that particular position. Now, remember, that came right out of the Word of God. John, the beloved, had a problem with Diotrephes, the, who wanted to take a preeminence away from the man that was ordained to God. And nobody's trying to hold this position jealously. But remember, I said, if I'm going to have to give an account for you, then you leave me, give the account, or you're on your own. Not just that simple. <clears throat> and I'm adamant about it, and so must every minister be, or he's going to wreck his ministry. And when he wrecks his ministry, he will wreck the church. <clears throat> now, so therefore, for those to sort of want to be somewhat in a church, that would destroy the church. And of course, we here do not have that problem because of our meanings. But let us say a person is doing some counseling and advising and questioning, etc., <clears throat> to those uh, unrelated or related in families, and this would make them a sort of an elder in part to a part of the flock. <clears throat> now, this is easily done where we have a family situation, which we do not have here, <clears throat> but I know some churches do have it, and certainly there's some in Canada, and I'm going to tell you, I, I guess I should weep day and night for the pastors, because you don't dare mention Reinhardt, but you've got Steinbrenner that's related, and you don't dare mention Steinbrenner, but 
A, B, C, D, F, G, and H, I, J, K, L are also related, and you've got a whole church of relatives, and it's a tough situation. Because all it takes is one person, <coughs> Pete knows what I'm talking about, to rise up and cause problems, 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 because they will not stick with the word, they will stick with the blood of the relative or the good friend, and you will have murder in the church. So, <clears throat> there is that spirit that can come in, and they'll sort of act as a sub-pastor. <clears throat> and of course, it is for your good. If anybody tells you that in this church, I've got news for you. You're just a liar if you tell the people that. Because there's only one source of authority. I'm going to be honest with you. It's right up here. And your source of authority being one depends on what is up here. And that depends on what is up here, whether my ministry is of God or not. Because it's going to be like father, like son. It's going to be like pastor, like sheep. Or like pastor, like goats, or whatever it is. <clears throat> now listen, that's standard. And that's the way it's got to be. Because you've got to have one mind, and we've got to see a church set in order. Now, <clears throat> what is there then, if there should be then in the church? These relationships that should not be in there. Well, I'm going to tell you. I got one answer. That's simply church order, the way Brother Branham did it. Preach the Word of God, the way Brother Branham did. <clears throat> All doctrines and basic word counseling come from the pastor. So there are no other teachers in the church. So thus the people simply know to refuse any advice unless they know the advice has been passed on from the pastor for their own good. Now, that's the way you've got to look at that, because it can't be otherwise. Now, <clears throat> let's go a little further. And this is a little touchy point here, but we're going to deal with it, because this church has its own understanding of how these things are done. Even in family relationships within the church, as I mentioned a while ago, the whole church gets the same teaching. Now watch what I'm saying. <clears throat> I do not take any family in this church aside. <clears throat> I do not take any families in this church aside. I do not deal with anybody in this church on the side. I deal with everybody from this pulpit. And that's the truth. <clears throat> Except where people come to me and they have to want to ask questions, which is their rights. But what I'm talking about this morning now is this spirit that gets into the church. And I understand there are churches that claim that spirit is there. And to a degree, I know in some churches, it is there. <clears throat> so family relationships within the church. The whole church gets the same teaching. So mother, father, sister, brother, aunts, and uncles, and cousins, etc., 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 know where the headship lies, and it is only a weak spirit that will call for interven intervention by their relatives or allow it to happen. Catch what I said? <clears throat> okay, now listen carefully, because this is a grievous point, and it's a personal point with some of you. And I don't pull my punches. And this tape goes around the country, and I care less. We're indigenous here. I don't care what any preacher preaches. I don't care what any pastor does. I do what I want here. And nobody has to listen outside this church, but you have to listen. Even family relationships within the church. The whole church gets the same teaching. So mother, father, sister, brother, aunts, uncles, and cousins by the dozens are already warned. Everybody sitting there is warned. They know where headship lies, and it is only a weak spirit in anybody that will call for some intervention <clears throat> by a relative or somebody else instead of going to the source which God laid in the church. Now, let me illustrate well, exactly why I say a weak spirit. <clears throat> and a wrong spirit can be there, too. Brother Branham told he was in a restaurant one day with his wife eating, and a lady was eating with him or she came over, I forget what it was. And she said, Brother Branham, I am having trouble. That man over there is trying to pick me up. 
And she said, why is it so many men are trying to pick me up? He said, because there's a spirit on you. <clears throat> but he said, I'm going to break that spirit. He began concentrating on the man who was trying to pick this woman up in this public place. After a man, while the man began to fidget, he dropped his napkin. Pretty soon his cutlery began jangling around. Pretty soon he got so nervous he couldn't sit any longer. Though his food was ordered, he suddenly jumped out and went out. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? Are you people here so weak in the word that if any woman tried to bring in a matriarchal spirit or any man a patriarchal spirit or anybody came here that you would be sucked in? I want you to absorb what I'm saying and get this flat. I'm not teaching here for nothing and I'm not holding a tight rein for nothing. I'm paying my dues and you're paying your dues. We're trying to get there, brother, sister. Is this word in this pulpit so weak? That people could get sucked in? This is a rotten tape to get out of certain areas, I admit. I don't believe there's any devil in hell big enough to come against the true word of God with true people. Now, we're not all 100% real believers. Brother Ban said there's got to be a mixed multitude. We'll deal with that. <clears throat> but I'm going to tell you something. Greater is he that's in our midst and he that's in us than we ourselves or in all the world. And if this word cannot deal from this pulpit with what I've just been talking about, I'm terribly sorry for you and for me and everybody because I simply don't believe that some of the things that are being said about this subject are accurate. A good hard look and a good hard concentration drove the spirit out of that man so it can be stopped. And a good solid word from this pulpit which you heard on and on and on I am responsible, and if you do not want me to be responsible, you want, you let me know and you try something. Nobody will try anything. Nobody's going to try anything. And I'm very good natured this morning, you're relaxed and happy. Because I believe that you get sheep food and I believe you're sheep. And until the judgment day, you don't know and I don't know. And I believe here I'm not going to fool you and you are not going to fool me. Because the life in this word is being released. So that if I had a mother who wanted to come in here and be a matriarch, I'd say, Ma, look, I left your skirt a long time ago and the apron string, so please don't try to strangle me. Just, just be Ma. Just be pa, just be brother, just be sister. <clears throat> no. How would a church handle it? Ostracize people? <clears throat> would they attempt to prove something on somebody? Not this church. I'm not interested. <clears throat> In fact, I should be more interested, but I'm to the point, look, if you're not grown up by this hour, after about six solid years of my teaching and trying to do everything I can for you to show you everything possible in the word of Almighty God, your blood's not in my hands anyway. And I'm not being casual and mean about it. I'm just trying to get something across to you. Look, you are now responsible citizens in the kingdom of God. So you neither fool nor are fooled. In other words, you're not, you're not like out here the deceived and deceiving. <clears throat> so I want you to, to clear the air once and for all finally where I stand. I just, I don't, I don't buy a lot of things that are said and done. I don't find anything in this church that's matriarchal or sistriarchal or brotherarchal or patriarchal or anything else. I, I feel by the word of God, the word of God is supreme by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and the people are going on and they will stay united as long as they keep their minds on this word. And you will have the proper love in your heart. 
you will have the proper grace in your heart, which you cannot get apart from this conduit. Now, if this conduit, the Word, is in your mind and in your heart, <clears throat> and you're struggling to grow, you pose no problem to me or to anybody, but together we pose a tremendous threat to the devil. And that's the way it should be. You know, Brother Branham's own vision showed how that he could crystallize the devil right there and just let him shatter. And say a word, the devil come right back. Letting you know and, and me know and all of us know the devil can walk in and out of this building and there isn't any way he can get a toehold in here unless somebody opens himself to him. There was no way the devil could even incarnate Judas, though absolutely it was his destiny until Judas opened the door. <clears throat> now, so that's settled. That's how discipline in this church goes. We simply preach the word of God and then we see what happens. You say, that's not nice. That's very nice. You know, I make a lot of things, and one of which is called <coughs> spaghetti sauce. It's not Italian because I know the Italians don't make it the way I do. They're too cheap. They make a watery kind of a tomato sauce that's sour. Forget it. Mine's loaded with good things. You know how it is. But I never know how it's going to turn out until I start eating it. So I don't know what the recipe's going to do here, the cake I'm trying to bake in the name of the Lord, until the eating of it. <coughs> till we see where it's going with you. And what I've seen to date, I'm very satisfied with. Very satisfied. There's nothing here but good in the name of the Lord. Now, if such a thing should exist, as it's claimed to exist, it can be removed simply by preaching the Word of God, setting the church in order by the Word, so they get their minds and hearts centered on the Spirit which is in the Word. <coughs> and then you turn right away to the Lord and let the thing just die plumb out because it maybe it wasn't even there in the first place. Because this is the hour of repentance. Now, it's in the mind repentance takes place, and then it gets down in the heart where it begins to work out. <coughs> so therefore, how are we, we going to work this church here and help this church? Anytime anything comes up, we will address it with the help of the Lord, God warning us, God showing us, although I must say this morning I haven't had warnings. I'm just bringing up things that are just have been brought to my attention. And we bring it before the church, and this church now is either in a condition to have church order, or I simply say forget it. So therefore, encourage yourselves in the Lord and say, God, and I'm doing it all the time. God, this word in me has got to do the work or I'm sunk. Because I haven't got it myself. There's no way I can do it. And you know something? That's the stand we've taken, and I've seen a growth in the people here that I've never seen in my 55 years being a Christian. I have not. Everything ever hoped for and dreamed for. Everything I, I kind of put to one side and said, well, I guess it never could be. God Almighty and His sovereign word never fails. <clears throat> so, and I tell you, if God never gave me the ministry I had to just waste it either. He never told me to speak within the wind, let the wind carry the voice into silence somewhere across the earth. His own word absolutely said, wherever his word is sent, it'll bring forth fruit. And I'm demanding a fruit in this church here. Whether you know it or not, I believe it and I will see it. You bet. I've seen too much now to turn my back on it. <clears throat> All right. That includes that little part of it. Now, there's another statement along with the pastor's ordained to see you through, and he is. He's obligated. He's commanded. Therefore, he is not obligated to boot you out and leave you be. He's obligated and necessary to discipline you and see if you get back. Oh, yes, it's not good riddance of bad rubbish. <clears throat> Down in Florida one time, we had some people that really were a pistol. It was women. That's why I'm so happy to see the men come in and the women tag along. When I see the women come in and the men tag along, yay, 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 I'm not happy. Now, I'm not saying a, a woman can't, you know, uh, talk to a man and the, and the man come in on her testimony. Absolutely, that, that's perfectly legal. And perfect, that's the way Brother Brand said it should be. She testified to the milkman and the postman and everybody. And they could come right into Christ on the Word. That's a good thing. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm talking now of, of, of people taking their real position in the church. You know, men strong the way they should be. <clears throat> okay. Now, the pastor's ordained to see you through. He's also the supreme authority in the church. Now, the reason I think Brother Brandon made that statement was to get rid of Nicolaitanism. <clears throat> which means that, you know, look, that's a spirit. 
Now, who do you think that spirit's going to get on? Preachers. Not going to get on the people, getting on the preachers. So therefore, Brother Branham was letting us know <clears throat> that no church had any authority over any other church. <clears throat> the church is obligated to settle its own problems according to the word. And if the pastor has been correct in teaching, the church will know what to do even in the time when the pastor cuts the people's throat usually by adultery. Nice silent group. You should be, because that's a serious thing. <clears throat> I've seen it on different occasions. And the church gets very, very concerned. And of course, they're sending up bleeps for help, which I don't, you know, blame them. They're looking to somebody that may be of a like mind as they are, and that's not against the word of God. But you know, even before they send out an SOS, the church people should know exactly what to do with the situation. It's right in the word of God. And I tell you, when you find a man in that condition, there is a thing, there's no, nece there's no necessity for that man to be ever your pastor again. <clears throat> because he betrayed the people. You talk about gross immorality. I tell you, the young man having his father's wife is not to be compared with a minister that cohabits with a woman in the congregation. No matter how hard you might pull for that person, the church should know what to do. <clears throat> you could say, well, brother, I tell you, you can sit on the front seat as long as you want. The church ever comes to the place of confidence restored. And adultery is not the only thing that's bad. It can lead you into plumb a false doctrine, something else. Lead you this way, that way, you sit in the front, she's sitting in the front desk. Front seat. <clears throat> but we're going to look around for a pastor we've got confidence in. See? All right. He is the supreme authority on the grounds he's, it's the church is indigenous. <clears throat> now, let me just give a little something here that may help you. Now, you know Jack Bell and I are very close, so I'm going to use Jack as my whipping boy, but not really. We're very, very close. Now, let's say that Jack had some problems in the church, and he said, well, I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to stick with Lee Vale. Now, you see, that would be the wrong statement to make. <clears throat> Turn on. Now, if he were to say, now, Brother Lee and I believe the very same things, and you know what he's taught, so you know what I taught, and you know what I teach, you know what he teaches. So, therefore, we're capable here of settling every single thing amongst ourselves. He doesn't need anybody called in. <clears throat> now, you may want to call somebody in as a matter of course to, to teach and do various things. That's all right, because that's, that's up, found in the Word of Almighty God. But I'm just trying to show you something here. It is not necessary to call another person in because the pastor himself is the authority and he must settle those problems, not somebody else, <clears throat> although he could lend a helping hand. <clears throat> Neither could he say, well, I align with this person, this pastor, and I'm coming to my congregation. Now, listen to me. The pastor doing that would make a grave mistake. Because Brother Branham said, Pastor, be subject to your congregation, and congregation be subject to your pastor. So therefore, the pastor and the congregation there must work things out for the glory of God, or they're failing as the bride of Christ. Now, if there's a refusal on the part of anybody to make anything right, <clears throat> and to get those things ironed out, and the church splits, that's your tough luck. But I'm going to tell you, one thing to demand of the people is honesty, absolute honesty. When things are being traced down, where things are awry, where things are remiss, where they're wrong, the people must be 100% honest. To hide behind a refuge of lies will not do any good. Because we're at the white throne right now, and there's condemnation on those things. See? <clears throat> but the pastor must take his place with the congregation at all times, and the congregation with the pastor. And you're looking at that. Now, I think there's enough on that statement. I could give you an actual illustration here, but I'm not going to do it because I ran across it just recently. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham made this as a categorical statement that the pastor is the supreme, supreme authority. And this is without a doubt based upon the book of Ephesians chapter 4, that he becomes the literal mouthpiece of God under the prophet to the people, 
And in Hebrews 13, 7 and 17, he speaks the word of God, he teaches the word of God, and that's what's ruled by. And there's no, there's no pastor can ever do anything, and no congregation can ever do anything unless the word of God is abided by. It must be the word of God in season. It must be the word of God for the occasion. It must be perfectly applicable. It cannot be perverted or twisted. It must be just what the word of God says. And when the people say, yes, this is true, we believe this, and we'll stand by it. <clears throat> and if necessary, something must be brought out. It is brought out. From that point on, the church can go ahead, or I'll tell you what happens. You will go into a place of where you pay a price, and then God will begin to work the thing back again. But you'll pay a price. <clears throat> Everybody pays a price. There's nobody that doesn't. And that's besides the price we pay to, clean, to make our lives disciplined to the Word of God, which doesn't mean we've sinned, which just means God is testing our mettle and seeing how we're going to conduct ourselves in the race of life. <clears throat> now, this has to be so, for Brother Branham categorically also said, there are no holy fathers, there are no bishops over us, but the Holy Ghost in the midst is the Holy One. That's right. The one who gave the word has come here to interpret the word, according to Brother Branham, which brings to pass Revelation 22, 18 to 19, which is effective. You cannot take or add a word. And the pastor is obligated to bring the whole counsel of God as much as he knows it. <clears throat> Let us understand, as Brother Branham said, the only one who could not be judged was the prophet, who is a part of, Reve of, of, of Hebrews 13 and 8. The prophet cannot be judged. Now, a sub-prophet, a minor, like a, in a five-fold minister prophet can be judged. <clears throat> the pastor can be judged. Anybody can be judged in this respect. Is that person preaching the true word of God? But you better be careful what filter you're using. <clears throat> I remember years back, a certain brother came by and he said, he, was, he wrote a little article, he wrote a book, and he absolutely disproved by his own theory what I wrote in the church age book for Brother Branham. <clears throat> when he got through writing it, I said, but brother, you're wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. Because I had a Pentecostal boy. And brother, he irked me. And I'm, I, I can be irked. And you know that. One of my weaknesses. And I can, I can get a hard enough, you know, Saturday night special. One of those $2 Berettas, what do you call them? Because of people don't know what they're talking about. So don't come to me. Because I've been to the prophet. I was already angry. I phoned brother Branham, but I told you, at my expense, when the prices were low in those days, you know, 25 years ago, <clears throat> more than that. <clears throat> Let's see, what was it? Back in 1963 starting, 25 years ago now. I said, Brother Branham, I'm getting some flack on what was written. And this kid got the manuscript like a fool let him read it. Yeah, maybe not a fool. I'm getting flack on the manuscript. You read it. Did you really know what was said? He said, sure. I said, now, Brother Branham, I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to explain it to you so you know exactly what is in my mind so that nobody has to guess. And, brother, I broke it down for 45 minutes, and he said, well, he said, certainly, Brother Vail. You're not, he said, you're perfectly right. And furthermore, here's some more scripture, and it was tougher than mine. <clears throat> All right. You've got to recognize there, then, there's such a thing, of course, as the prophet alone is part of Hebrews 13 and 8. He's the absolute final authority. <clears throat> but the also you must realize that the pastor must line up with what Brother Branham taught, and he cannot use it through the filter that he was used to, which is what I was going to tell you about, was this man was pulling everything that Brother Branham taught through his own understanding, through his own filter. And it wasn't too long till this man fell for a guy from India who called himself the successor of Brother Branham, and that God was now in him. And you talk about hogwash and junk. I read some of his stuff. I never heard anything in my life like it. <coughs> Completely deceived. <coughs> so, though questions may be asked, and questions should be asked, remember, until you get truly repentant in your mind, and you get rid of all your dogmas, and all your Nazarene, Pentecostal, Methodist, Baptist, various types of Catholics. In other words, all denominational thinking, and it's a tough one, but God will help you. You'll never understand what Brother Branham was saying. <clears throat> this was the key to my first understanding the prophet, and I realized Brother Branham was not talking my language. If I had not understood that, I never would have got anywhere. And when the going was tough, if I had not said, when did he ever make a mistake? The prophet's right. 
I believe what he said. I never would have got the things that God had for me. <clears throat> you cannot have a mind that is contradictory to the prophet or to the people teaching. You must have and can have an inquiring mind that can be taught. <clears throat> now, you've got the Holy Spirit, you've got the word given by the prophet to know if I'm pulling something on you in this pulpit. <clears throat> and there's nobody teaching like I teach. I take sermons word by word with the prophet said and compare them back and forth <clears throat> so that you know that I would cut my throat in no time if I wasn't lining with the word of God. So now, everyone must line with the word of the prophet. That's Revelation 22, 18, 19, Hebrews 13 and 8. There's no way to get around it. That's Malachi 4, 5, and 6. If the prophet does not, <clears throat> then he will lose his effectiveness and the people will look for new leadership and he can be replaced. Now, some preachers will tell you, I cannot be replaced. <clears throat> this church was built like Brother Branham's as a founder of a complete new set of understanding with the Word of God here and understanding, which I believe to be the Holy Ghost. I recognize that there's no way you could vote me out. Yet in order to quell any thoughts whatsoever that I had any whip hand over you, I said you can vote me at any time you want and it won't bother me at all. Because I'll know one thing, you'll think I am a goner and as far as I'm concerned, I'll think you are. That leaves us even, like the guy that wanted to count the horse's teeth and the horse wanted to count his fingers. <coughs> no problem. I'm not tough this morning. I, I feel relaxed. I feel good. I just believe I've got a church here that's mature that can listen to me talk and understand I'm trying to help you to get you out of these things that maybe preachers got you into a bind. And if I've got you in a bind, I want to get you out of that bind. Because I want to be out of the bind. I want to be God's free man. I want you to be God's free people. I want us all to be mature because one of these days we're going to sure need it. <clears throat> to be ordained, to see you through, and being the spiritual husband, and the supreme authority is not an office one picks up like a job, but it's a life that is gifted and qualified by God, and people of like spirit will recognize it. <clears throat> now, there it is right there. You'll notice how that just somehow people fit in with the pastor. <clears throat> yep, they fit in. They love the errors of his ways, or they love the truth of his ways. And, but it's no big deal. <clears throat> it's just a what? A unity, a growing together. It is a, an empathy. It is an orientation. It is God working in nature. And he does it with other churches, do it with ours. <clears throat> you can go to churches 100% serpent seed. They're doing great. You can get a whole church that's blasphemed the Holy Ghost. The anointing of God will be on them. They'll do great. <clears throat> they just follow right along with the preaching, the teaching and all. So you see, when I expect the teaching, which I believe to be of God, that you will fit in with and be a part of it, I am not kidding you. I believe it. I know that it is true. You won't be little, <clears throat> little planets orbit, orbiting around <clears throat> me as your gravitational point. That's not true. But together... We'll be moving together in whatever is taught. See? God's ordained shepherd and sheep will flow together. If you want to, you can read again John 10, 1 to 5 and 27, 31 concerning the shepherd and the sheep. And read again Ephesians, the fourth chapter, how you grew up into Christ to the very headship under a ministry that's ordained to God. <clears throat> a true pastor is not responsible for goats. And true sheep don't have to follow an off-the-word or goat preacher. So I never tell you people, you've got to follow me. <clears throat> you don't got to follow me. You've got to stay up, stick with me. You don't have to listen to me. I ask you one reason. Why are you here? Well, you're here for one reason. That's the Word of God. <clears throat> if you're here for me, you're going to miss it. And if you think I'm the only one that teaches it and you've got to hear me, you're wrong. There are people right now say, well, you've got to hear this brother here to make the rapture. You do not have to hear Lee Vale to, to make the rapture. You have got to hear God's Word for the hour. And if I have that word, you are fortunate to be hearing it. But it doesn't mean because I'm here, you're getting it. 
I could be making mistakes right this morning and leading your own. You better check it out. Being in this meeting does not guarantee you anything. No way, shape, or form. <clears throat> no. There can be false preachers, false teachers, false evangelists, false pastors, false everything. Furthermore, only a hypocrite, says Brother Branham, will use the Word of God as a club. <clears throat> That's right. I've been a little hypocritical at times. <clears throat> Recently, the Lord's helped me. I'm not a hypocrite. I tell you the truth. I know my failings. I don't care about yours. I care about mine. I only care about yours insofar as I care about mine. In other words, I want us both to be right. I want us both to live right before God. But I'm not here as a hypocrite to club you with the Word of God. I don't want to do that, and by the grace of God, I will not do it, and your spirit will help me not to do it, because you're here to get food, and I tell you, you do not call a, a dog or a sheep or anything else to eat and hit them with the club. That is a dirty trick. But I've seen little kids entice animals and then whoop them. In fact, I've done that myself. I think I did anyway as a kid. I wasn't good to animals when I was a kid. I've learned to love them since and be gentle and kind with animals. <clears throat> so much, and you know something? I believe that reflects upon preachers too. If you're gentle with animals, you could be gentle with people. If you're not gentle with animals, you're not gentle with people either. There's something wrong with that person. In other words, everything counts. You keep your eyes open. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a type. So only a hypocrite will use the Word of God as a club. The Word of God is a sword to cut off unbelief and trim and firm up the saint in the spiritual, not to destroy him, not to cripple him, not to cut his head off. The message of restoration is not intimidation, mutilation, or devastation. Now, if I've intimidated you, I've got to apologize to you. I don't mean to intimidate you. I only mean to raise one thing when I talk about you and me in the ministry. Just don't fool with me, that's all. And I can laugh about it and tell you, because it ain't going to work. See, I don't go to your job and tell you how to run it. I don't go to your homes and say this and that. Neither will I allow you to come between me as individuals and the people and the ministry I know that goes out and change people's lives and homes and everything else. Someday, I just may copy some letters off, which I've never done to this day, and pass around the congregation and let you know if you're not getting help, somebody else is. And it's the same words, the same spirits, the same man, it's the same everything. Now, I know you're getting help here, so that I'm not, I'm not using that as a club. I'm just telling you exactly how it is. I'm not here to intimidate you, though it may sound like I am. I'm not intimidation. Look. <clears throat> no, it's too late to intimidate. I'm not here to mutilate, to devastate. Some of you have been torn and devastated. That's not the preacher's job. It's to restore. Find out what's wrong, where it's wrong. Do something about it. You don't say, be warmed and fed and then do nothing. The Bible even says that him that steals, that stole steal no more. Don't do it. What's he both do? Labor with his hands. Doing what's good. In order to what? Help the people that don't have anything. Well, this guy evidently didn't have much of an easy being stealing it. And God said, now listen, fella, you stop stealing. Get your hand out of somebody else's pocket. You get a job and you work, and you make enough to help somebody else. Well, that's why I think that that's the way this church is, is built here. <clears throat> that's how we're going to do it, see? Now, I saw a picture the other day, <clears throat> a geographical, and in there this shepherd had a crook. I never really understood too much about that shepherd crook. I thought kind of he leaned on it and he did this and that, and I found you and that guy did. When a sheep, he just reached in and grabbed him right by the neck. And then I thought maybe you should grab him by the toes or the hoof. He didn't grab him by the, by the shank at all or the legs. He grabbed him right by the neck. And the thing wasn't hurt. He had enough wool up here. And he just pulled the sheep back <clears throat> and did what he needed to do the sheep and let the sheep go, and it was fine. So the shepherd does not <coughs> grab the sheep <clears throat> to strangle him with the crook. No. Or to hurt him, but to help him. And Brother Branham said, now don't choke on this. And they did. And he said, don't spit it out, <clears throat> but they did. Now the shepherd, the pastor, <clears throat> the teacher, whoever he is, may give you and me some things. Oh, I got a lot from the word here. It's tough. I told you there's some things I, I, I choked on. 
Some I just pretty well was ready to spit out. And I said, now hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. It can't be what you're thinking because Brother Branham's not that kind of a guy. He's here to help, 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 help. See, love, 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 do, do, do. So I said, okay. Boy, it was hard. So I'll read that sermon over again. <clears throat> hey, you know that message on perfect faith? I heard that time after time. And it bored me. It confused me. It made me go negative. But one day, I said I'm going to take it word by word. I never had so much fun in my life, spiritually speaking. The Word of God is a shepherd's crook that might grab you by a little bitsy necky to give you an adjustment so it gets up here in the brain and down in the heart. But you're not to choke on it. It's not meant to choke you. <clears throat> it's not meant for you to spit it up. It's meant for you to do you good. No preacher should use scripture, one scripture verse against another scripture to divide the people because all the Word of God is in harmony and it applies to all of us. <clears throat> he must never divide uh, the Word in such a way that he will get his own ends met to the detriment of the people. You follow what I said? He must never do it to the detriment of the people. <clears throat> We're so careful in this church here concerning building funds, every single thing, that we don't want anybody stumbling, we don't want anybody hurt. I would sooner pay the price and the whole price myself and stand in jeopardy before God that I've done a wrong thing with the money that I've been asked to handle. Now, you live with that, brother, sister. You're sitting in the pews. I want you to live with that. Look everybody in the eye. I stand in jeopardy. You didn't ask for it? No, sir. I put myself there. So I want you to know we're trying to be sincere in this pulpit. If five minutes from now I was going to cut your throat, believe me, I would cut it good, but not in this pulpit. Hope you get what I'm saying. I don't intend to cut your throat. <clears throat> I hate blood. <clears throat> Had to stop me right there. All right. The scripture is used as light to show where the problem lies, and the same scripture as food to give you strength for the trials of your journey. Follow what I'm saying? <clears throat> Understand what I'm saying? Yeah, listen, the muscle that you tear down, ooh, groaning exercise, ooh, pulling those, that weight, ooh, my, I couldn't do it if I tried. Build stronger and greater muscles. <clears throat> yep. Your body, I wish I knew the terms. I'm not a physician. I don't know physiology with a plug nickel. But there are certain terms, and one term is this. You've got a problem in your body. So you begin taking something to rectify the problem. There must first of all be a tearing down of what doesn't belong there, and then there's a building up of what should be there. It's the same with this word. The corrective word is food. The light is food. There is no food without light. Photosynthesis is the basis of all food. Without light, there is nothing, cold and death. So if you want to eat, <clears throat> you must have light. At the time of the Exodus, God gave both light and manna to the people. Now listen, <clears throat> you'll understand now clear why I talk about <clears throat> so much the possibility of being a mixed group of people. And you know we're not looking at anybody say this one, this one, this one, this one, this will make it. Look, forget it. I don't even know myself till the rapture takes place in the resurrection. Even the mixed multitude benefited by the grace of God and they were dealt with only at times of insurrection. But Moses even pleaded for them all and let them alone until they died off a natural death. As Brother Branham said, love them until they come in or go out. That's all. <clears throat> Nobody worries. 
<clears throat> nobody worries. If you've been defrauded, oh, join the crowd. It's not the last time you're going to be. If you bring down humility to lay somebody's boots and all you get is a kick in the chops for it, join the crowd. It's not the last time. <laughs> Just get used to it, it's all. <laughs> Knowing on the other side, as Brother Brown has said, if you got the wrong wife on this side, you get the right one on the other side. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everything you lose here <clears throat> will be laid up in heaven for you. Don't worry about it. Even the mixed multitude, <clears throat> their clothes didn't wear out. They ate the same food. Everybody had a great time. Now what I'm trying to show you here, you can go out here to a church that's not a mixed multitude. They're one multitude. They're false or phony. They're the chat that Brother Branham told us, the Word of God told us. <clears throat> Proven. They can have every blessing, every sunshine, every anointing, but they're going to miss it on the other side. All I'm trying to tell you is this, brother, sister. There is no need for glumness amongst us. There is no need for lacking anything in this church. There is no need for somebody to say, well, I could be a false one. I won't get it. Everybody in this church can claim, I am an anointed child of God. I'm going to get it. Everybody today can claim every single promise in the Exodus the way Israel did. And only death is the final answer. Who goes where, nobody knows. And even the rapture, nobody will know, except when we get there and face each other. I'm not preaching any hard deal here where we're going to do a certain thing and we're going to make it by the preacher, this or that, the other thing. I'm trying to give you the Word of God. <clears throat> to show you what the Word of God says and what you can do with it and what it'll do with you. What the Almighty Himself stands behind in this exodus. Brother Branham category says, claim your whole family under the token. Who knows if they're going to come in? Act as though they will. <clears throat> now, you don't stand for their nonsense. Going to make your house some kind of den of thieves or something. But you can stand with them on the word of Almighty God and encourage them. Say, all right, a good pastor will give a warning by the word. He will water that word. He will keep it before the people until anyone amongst us sent by the devil <clears throat> will lose his power and get saved or go away. Now, you know, that's one reason we talk the Word, why we strive about the Word here and always want to go into the Word, is because you must know what that Word says. <clears throat> that's the idea. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham gave us church order, but it has to start at the top, and it did. He came back with a shout to put the church in divine subjection to the Holy Ghost by the Word of God ordained in the mouths of those that God ordained. Yes, sir. We're right on the trail, brother, sister. Starts right at the top. <clears throat> How much time we got? 20 minutes. Well, all right, let's read a bit here. In, well, in 2 Timothy, I haven't got time to read 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 26 and all of those, but you can read them for yourself there. 1 Corinthians, starting with 1 Corinthians 15, 20. <clears throat> because we've got to hurry up. I want to get you out of here in time. Now, coming close to the end of what we're, this series here, Brother Branham said you need a church to go to and pay your tithes. That's what he said. That's an easy statement to be perverted by pride and greed. But if you read 1 Corinthians 9, 1 to 18, and then 2 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, <clears throat> you will find that he speaks of two different types of giving. One is a tithe, and one is to help your fellow men. <clears throat> we might just read that. Because people do need a church to go to and pay their tithes. Some people are not fortunate enough to have a church to go to. <clears throat> and there's no way that they can go, perhaps because their faith has failed them and they, won't, they don't make a step. I don't know. Paul says, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ their Lord? Have you not, are ye not my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless am to you, for the seed of mine apostleship are you in the Lord. My answer to them that examined me is this, have we not authority to eat and drink? Have we not authority to eat about a sister being a wife, as well as other apostles as a brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Or only I and Barnabas have we not the, the authority to forbear working? Who goes to warfare at any time in his own charge? Who plants the vineyard and eats not of the fruit thereof? Who feedeth the flock and does not take of the milk of the flock? Say, are these things the man, or saith not the law the same? For it's written by the law of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the, the ox that treadeth out 
mouth of the, uh, mouth of the oxen treadeth out the corn. <clears throat> Does God take care for oxen, or seth it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt it's written, that he that plows should plow in hope, and he that threshes in hope should be partakers of hope. If I have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if, if, I, if we reap your carnal things? So that's what Brother Branham taught. It's, and he said, people said, well, Brother Branham, well, should, should a Christian pay tithe? He said, if he's a Christian, he will pay tithes. He said, should a Christian work? He said, if he's a Christian, he will work. <clears throat> How's he going to get by? If others be partakers of this authority, are we not even more so? Nevertheless, we have not used this authority, but suffer all things, that some should hinder the, we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do, do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? In other words, they are part of the sacrifice and so on. And they that wait at the altar are partake of the altar. That's true. <clears throat> even so, the Lord hath ordained that they which preach the gospel should live by the gospel. But I have used none of these things. Brother Branham didn't either. Neither have I written these things that, I should, that should be done unto me. For it were better for me to die than any man should make my glorying void. <clears throat> In other words, a pastor does not have to take wages, doesn't have to take tithe. But the people are obligated to pay tithe, whether the man would do it or not. <clears throat> but if he's going to live his whole life for God, it's better that he does, because it's too hard otherwise. Now, he said, for if I preach the gospel, I, I have nothing to glory. Uh, if I preach the gospel, for if... I, for, through, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is me, if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I will have a reward. <clears throat> but if I do it against my will, a dispensation of the gospel unto me. What is my reward then? That I, when I preach, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. <clears throat> so there's the thing right there that ministers got to waken up to. Just because they preach, and Brother Brown has said you need a church to go out and pay your tithes, the tithe is not the big thing. It's the understanding of the spirit behind it. <clears throat> Let's go to 2 Corinthians and see what he says there in the um, 12 chapter, 13 and 14. He's talking about himself here as I understand it. And he said, now he said, For what, what is it wherein you are an inferior to other churches, except that I myself was not burdensome to you? This is the Corinthian church. Forgive me this wrong. Behold, the third time I'm ready to come to you. I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. <clears throat> now, this reverses the whole picture again, though Paul said, you were an inferior church because you didn't tithe. And he said, I'm coming one more time, and I still will not take anything from you because the pastor is like the parent. Now, he's got a, the, the pastor is a parent to the church. He's got children. And the children do not lay up for the parents, <clears throat> but the parents for the children. In other words, the sacrifice always begins at the top. That's the way it is. The minister does not preach for tithe, although the tithe will come in. But he will be responsible for the handling thereof. I've got to face the a minister. <clears throat> but you simply do not build a church for a tithe, Satan, or do you have people come to your church simply for a tithe? We have people who send tithe here because they get the tapes and never give them here. <clears throat> That's legitimate. What else can they do? They did with Brother Branham. See? Now, if we read in 1 Corinthians 9, 1 to 18, <clears throat> which, we did, which we did not do, we read in, uh, we did some, but in 2 Corinthians there, uh, we've already read that. But we listen in here, Paul as a preacher, <clears throat> left a note here for all the other preachers to follow, and I won't read it, but we read part of it here in the 14th, 13th and 14th verses, but you'll find what Paul then tells about his own ministry in Christ, his own experience, his own revelation, <clears throat> and then he tells him, I never did charge anybody, nor will I charge. And then he says here, I will, in the 15th verse, I will gladly spend and be spent for you, though more abundantly love you, the less I be loved. Now that's the thing right there that pastors got to get their eyes on to right there. That many times a congregation never returns the measure that they could return for the word preached and the example set. They will just sit there and not do it anyway. I'm sorry for them, but that's the way it is. And no preacher can expect 100%. Now, here I do. I hope for 100%, but I know I have no right to expect it. Now, watch what he said. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I send unto you? He said, did I send someone to try to give my cause and get money and all? He said, no, I never did that. But he said, the people that came to you walked in the same spirit that I came to you on. <clears throat> so we see here that when Brother Branham makes a statement about tithes, you simply cannot jump onto it like one man began preaching tithing, and he said, now if you don't pay your tithes, you won't make the rapture. 
<clears throat> I can't buy that. He even boasted that one man got so scared he sold his car and gave it to him, or he gave him his car. He said, at this rate, I may even get some houses. I tell you something, brother, sister. And I warned you before, and I'm warning you again, that when you get into this message the way I go into it, and you cut and dry it the way I do it and explain A, B, C, D, and one, two, three, four. <clears throat> and I show you what Brother Branham showed you, how God deliberately did things. You soon get away from all that great enthusiasm that you had of free choice and this and that and the other thing you were taught erroneously. And you get down where you see the sovereign you God. And it's just about like you're eating cardboard instead of cake with icing on it. And I preach and tell you what goes on in this end time with a mixed multitude. And I let you know absolutely that men have conned women in the audience and women have conned men and everything else. And despicable things have done and have been done in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something. I've warned you all along and showed you that a minister that's off the word invariably is caught in adultery and you're seeing more and more of it. And you're going to understand that what a man sows, he will reap. And you better get used to this, that there are two vines growing together and the spirit is so much alike, it could invade this church here and like a razor edge, it could fool people unless you're elected God and you're schooled in the word of Almighty God. And you might get hard within yourselves and say, hey, <clears throat> that brings it down to a place. What is there left? I'm going to tell you what's left. The resurrection and the rapture is left. So you be careful what you're hearing, what you're doing about it. <laughs> Don't you be deceived. <clears throat> and think, hey, this thing is so rough and so tough. I'm going to leave it behind. I'll tell you, you leave it behind. It's going to get rougher and tougher. I want to tell you, Brother Brown categorically said, I don't know, I cannot prove what was written by the Knights of Columbus. I don't know. <clears throat> I haven't got any idea because I wasn't there when it was written, but it's supposed to be authentic, which I cannot prove. <clears throat> I'm of the opinion it is pretty authentic, having known the history of what went on, went on with the Jesuits and what went on and with the churches that they're established in this world here. <clears throat> Brother Bran said, I would sooner have all of that committed to me than just five minutes in the tribulation. <clears throat> if you want to read what happened during the great purges, the great times of destruction, the martyrs, I've got the Martyr's Mirror, about over a thousand pages you can read. I've got Fox Book of Martyrs. I've got others. And Brother Brandon said, a repeat of all diabolical cunning. I don't know what lies ahead for us. I've got no idea, but I know this one thing, that the true bride is going to get out of here. The foolish virgin will suffer, but she will make it. <clears throat> we don't want to be in that category. Now, I'm going to conclude here without going back to a lot of scripture that I might go into by reading Ezekiel and some of these portions to you that you could read Ezekiel 34 yourself concerning pastors and all. <clears throat> but in conclusion, let me say, <clears throat> just that I can't endorse a recent statement made by various ministers that you as people and individuals must have a revelation of who your pastor is. And that saying, if modified, could be taken, which means simply to me that the sheep will recognize the true word and thereby recognize that man is a pastor that they could go to and get help from. I can take that, but I can't take the other. <clears throat> I cannot do it. Now, but I say this, if it's required of the sheep to have a revelation of your pastor, and one person said that he had a revelation of his pastor, it was his before the foundation of the world. I won't dispute those statements, brother, sister, but I can see where they lead. <clears throat> and I'm very unhappy with them because that spirit gets on the church. And pretty soon you begin taking issue, as one man once said, he went to one fellow, he said, brother, he said, if an issue came between be, be brother so-and-so and brother so-and-so, who would you stand with? He said, I would stand with brother so-and-so. That man who was supposed to be a preacher made a terrible mistake. He should have said, I'll stand with the word. Not standing with Lee Bale or somebody else. Just get that flat brush. But as sincere as I am, as much faith as I got in what the prophet said that I have, <clears throat> what I believe by the grace of God or what I have, I'm not infallible. Trouble could happen right with me as your pastor here, doing what I can. I'm not truly a pastor, but I can pastor. <coughs> if it's required the sheep to have a revelation of their pastor, then do the pastors have a revelation of their sheep. This would then open the door for a man to come here and say, well, I have a revelation. He said that you should be in my church. <coughs> well, if you receive it, I'll help you get there. We're not so broke we can't do it. Now, these things are kind of funny, but they're tough. 
<clears throat> because I'm not about to be sucked in by anybody trying to bring any influence in this church outside of what's in this pulpit here. Nor do I have any hope to be in anybody else's pulpit and influence them. It's strictly the Word of God and not anybody putting himself in a position that you have to be in tune with that person and that position and it's going to do you some good. You only can put yourself in a tune with that if you are confident that that is a source of the Word for you. <clears throat> it is also said that you cannot get a revelation. It'll take your pastor to give it to you. I do not believe that. <clears throat> I don't believe that for one minute here. I believe I've helped you. There's no doubt about it. But you really didn't need me. You need the Holy Ghost. Because Brother Branham himself, with the full authority manifested by God, could not give anybody a revelation. Only the Holy Ghost can do it. And the funny thing is there, the dozens of people sitting there had dozens of different revelations on the same statement. <clears throat> I remember one time he preached a sermon, and it was a toughie. And the people came out of the church saying this, that, and the other thing. They said roughly five or seven different things. As soon as I got the tape, I played it. I said, roll her back. Play it again. Roll it back. Play it again. I listened. I listened. I wrote down exactly what I heard. I took it to Brother Branham. I said, Brother Branham, Different friends of mine are saying this, 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 this. Here is what I say you said. I was right on every single count. You would have 12 preachers sitting there, <clears> 100 <throat> people with 100 different ideas. The big thing is, are you full of the Holy Ghost? That's what really counts. Is the minister full of the Holy Ghost? If they are, if that minister is, there'll be one word coming from him which came from that man, and you'll be hearing it one way. The way he heard it from him, the way he heard it from God, the way you hear it from me, or the man that's ordained to help you. And you will have no problems. Now you'll have problems, that's a little sketchy thing, you know what I mean. <clears throat> but as for getting there, you will not have any problem. God will see that you get here. Now, listen. Here, our doors are open to people who claim they are sincere, and they're wrong. We give them welcome, absolutely. And we'll see what the Word of God will do for them. Simple as ABC. <clears throat> if they need help, they will get help. If they're past help, there's nothing I can do for them. As simple as ABC. I will not take the stand that many people take. And I say, this tape, this tape goes out. And I don't care whose hand it goes into it. No problem. This is how this church operates. I'm through hearing voices anywhere in the world. I have one voice which came from God by a vindicated prophet. I trust every preacher takes the same stand. Because in the long run, I am going to account for you whether I want to or not, and I will account for everyone who gets those tapes to get help. I must answer. If I find something different than what I taught, I am obligated to come back and reteach it. That's why I say time and time again with the prophet, the church is strictly autonomous. It's indigenous. We do not have anybody telling us what to do and how to do it. <clears throat> the people are growing. If I were to depart here tomorrow, I'll leave Thursday. The plane could go down, I could be killed. I may never get back, but I can tell you this one thing. This church will go on. You will not divide. You will not split. You will not fragment. You will wait. I've got that confidence that you will wait, and God will send you the man that he wants you to have, and he will be a man with that word. So that leaves us pretty solid here as far as my faith is concerned and what my trust in you is. And I believe that trust is completely mutual. <clears throat> we have a church that is word-oriented. Time goes on to be even more so because I don't believe the half has even yet been uncovered. I believe we have barely looked at some of the good things. Some of those great deep things Brother Branham taught <clears throat> are here waiting for every single person sitting here, and I want you all to count yourselves as benefactors of the living Word of God that is able to take you and will take you right through. Don't look around and say, well, I know this kind of believer and that kind. Could I be one? You, Brother Branham, said you believe you are one. 
And if only one person is going to make it in that town, you are the one, and you don't point your finger and say, well, you can't make it because I'm going to. Because he's going to believe that he's one, and together you're both believing you're that one. So that ought to make you strong in this word and strong to go ahead, to move along with the things of God. I believe it will. The Lord bless you. Let's rise and be dismissed. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, we've taken some time now, seven lessons, not covered it even as we should cover it. Try to cover things, Lord, without covering too much. Yet, Lord, we might come back with your help to say things a little different, to make it a little bit stronger, <clears throat> so that we know just how to work with each other, love each other, help each other. Forgive each other, just go right on, knowing that anyone that asks forgiveness must be positively restored. Anyone stumbling, Lord, must be helped, straighter paths made for the feet. In other words, boy him up, help him along, help her along, and not listen to any comments that other people make as concerning the, the defamation or the reprobation of anybody, and say this person cannot repent, this person cannot do so and so, this person that. Lord, we don't go for that here by your grace, Father, because in our hearts, Father, we don't believe that we have any kind of a final say over anybody's destiny whatsoever. We can only preach the word and see what happens. And Father, that's how I feel this morning, to just preach this word here and see what happens with people. And by your grace, Lord, encourage them. And anything I can do to strengthen them, not to see the word happens to them, but to see that which has already come into their lives grows more fruit then they're capable of at this time because they're being helped. And Lord, I know that you're helping me and the people are helping me. So why shouldn't we help each other and go on in this great, wonderful exit out of this world, knowing the Holy Spirit, the pillar of fire is leading us right into the millennium, that he who descended as the Lord Jesus Christ himself in the form of the Holy Spirit, taking headship of the church, getting ready now to raise the dead as headship goes into full authority, Lord God, we are a, a, a tremendously blessed people. <clears throat> we know those Pharaoh's armies may be behind us and they may be threatening to destroy us. They're drowned in the Red Sea the same as they did before, Lord. We're not trying to hurt anybody. But, Father, we're trying to get out of here, and you told us how to get out of here. And if we obey you, Father, and we love you and work with you and you work with us, then we know that everything is just exactly right. The Lord, our shepherd, leading us right through this valley of sorrow and tears and all. Father God, I just pray this morning you would give everybody strength in this building, from the youngest to the oldest, from the weakest to the strongest. Not your blessing this morning as is required in these people's hearts, minds, and lives, to give them that additional strength now, to shake off every burden, to know that they are your free people, Lord. They sit here as your free people, to move ahead, Lord, as much as lies within them, being at peace with all men and peace with you, moving onward and upward, Lord. Nobody here to hinder, but everybody here to help. Father God, let that be the motto of this people this morning. Let it be their war cry. Let it be their marching word. Let us go on, God, we pray, because there's so much at stake. And Father, I don't want to stand in anyone's way any more than I would want anyone to stand in my way. Help us to realize that, Lord, this morning, that you stood in the way for us and we were hellbound and we were going down to sin and that did it. And so, Lord, now this morning, help us to stand in the gap for each other and all of us go on together in Christ as a church, reaching into adulthood, maturing, O oh God, just with this word, Lord, simple, sweet people of God with the word of God. Father, that's all I ask in this life. That's all I want. If I'm not asking enough, Lord, if I'm outside of it, I want you to show me, Lord, where the prophet said something else, and then, then I'll know how to go back because I can't trust my own thinking and my own inclinations and my own desires, Lord. But I know I can trust a revealed word. And Lord, I pray that somehow there's enough of you within me to trust that revealed word, because that's what counts. And I wanted the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be all power and honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you.